Hey everybody, Mike here from DIY Aqua Pros. Today I'll be showing you how to save a ton of money, about 200 bucks, when it comes to getting your hands on a functional PAR meter for measuring your aquarium's light input. To be precise, this tool measures the amount of photosynthetically active radiation at a given point, expressed as micromoles per meter squared per second. This is also described as the photon flux at a given point. I'll talk more about the scientific details surrounding PAR in part 2 of this video. For now, let's just start the build. To create a usable PAR meter, you need two basic components. A PAR sensor, and a device that will create a readout of the data collected by the sensor. Now with the cost of the most inexpensive PAR meter, including that sensor, being about $375, Accurately measuring your tank's photosynthetically relevant light input is more or less a luxury for today's average planted tank keeper. Not much PAR data exists in regards to different light fixtures, and because many of us use a combination of different bulbs, reflectors, etc., it's often hard to translate someone else's data to your own tank. It's for these reasons and a few others I knew I needed to get my hands on the most accurate and cost-effective PAR meter so I could begin to quantify my light and attempt to create some structure as far as what is low, medium, and high light with regards to PAR instead of the old school and often misleading method of watts per gallon. I started doing a lot of research and ended up picking a PAR sensor made by Apogee Instruments. When you get to Apogee's website, there are a few choices. Now since I bought my sensor about a year ago, there's now a new and improved version that will hook up to a computer and has some software that looks pretty cool. But this new sensor alone is 345 bucks. that's about the cost of the sensor that I have with the Apogee meter. And just based on reading about this new sensor, it doesn't seem to be that much more accurate than the setup I have now. Rather than purchase the complete meter with the waterproof sensor from Apogee, I learned of a method for measuring PAR with just the sensor hooked up to an inexpensive digital multimeter. The sensor, like I previously mentioned, was purchased for $155. Now there are two choices when it comes to the sensor. There's the SQ120 model and the SQ110. They only differ in how the sensor is calibrated. The 110 is calibrated under direct sunlight, while the 120 is calibrated using cool white T5 fluorescent tubes. Now there's a lot of different chatter out there on reef forums and planted aquarium forums as far as what sensor will work best, but after a few emails with tech support over at Apogee, I decided to go with the SQ120 because it's meant to measure electric lighting and all the percent error calculations for LEDs, which I'll talk about in a later video, are made based off the 120 model. So you're still able to use the model that was calibrated with direct sunlight under your aquarium lights, but additional corrections will be required to get the most accurate PAR reading. So next I went over to Amazon and got a new digital multimeter for about 10 bucks. Apogee actually explains how to incorporate their sensors to a multimeter, and they say to use a high quality one when pairing the two. But this cheap one I got ends up working just about the same as an $80 meter I also have. Both links for the sensor and the multimeter are in the description if you decide you want to construct one of these on your own. So now let's talk about linking the two together. This pairing works by splicing the sensor into the leads of the multimeter. We're just going to cut and strip the wires and link them together. Conveniently, the sensor wires are already ready to go. Red to red, black to black, held together in this case with a few wire nuts and some electrical tape just in case it gets some water droplets on it. The additional wire from the sensor is not required, so we just cap it off the same way. I did a so-so job at taping this whole thing together because I was really excited to get this thing up and running. Once that's done, you're pretty much all ready to go and you can begin to use the meter right away. Now using this meter as it's rigged here would be pretty difficult in a big aquarium where you need to move the sensor across large distances. Apogee sells a wand attachment that the sensor can screw onto, but I decided to just make my own out of some half inch PVC. The screw on the back of the sensor makes it easy to secure in place. Just make sure that you have close to a 90 degree angle so that the sensor can be perpendicular to the light source. That's really important here. This 45 degree elbow fitting ends up working perfectly. And just wrap the excess cord around the PVC and kept it all in place with some electrical tape. So now let's take some PAR readings. Fire up the multimeter and select the 200 millivolts setting. When placed under a light source, 
the multimeter will give a readout in millivolts, which then needs to be multiplied by 5 to give the PAR value. You can now place your sensor anywhere in the aquarium to find out the PAR reaching that spot. You'll notice that the sensor is very sensitive to movement as PAR drops off exponentially with distance, so try and hold it as steady as possible. Here at the air water interface of my 72 gallon, which has four HOT5s that are about a year old, I get a reading of close to 50. So multiplying by five gives me about 250 par at this spot. Interestingly, when I swap out my four old bulbs for only two brand new ones, I get very close to the same readings, proving that the age of your bulbs really does affect the amount of par entering your system. Now down around the java fern here, I get a reading of about 22, so that ends up being about 110 par. Finally, just above the s repens in the foreground of the tank, I get about 8, so 40 par. When you're done taking readings, dry off your sensor and replace the protective cap it comes with. These Apogee sensors are supposed to not need recalibration for about 3 years, upon which you can just send it in for a free calibration. I've had mine for about a year now, and it's still working great. The next logical step here is to quantify the light requirements of different plants relative to PAR. Watts per gallon is an archaic way of measuring light and we need to move on. PAR levels don't tell us everything about the light in our aquarium and I'll be talking more in detail about Watts, PAR, and Kelvin in another video. Hey, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up and don't forget to check out DIYAquapros.com for more DIY projects, aquarium science videos, fish and plant profiles, and product reviews. We'll see you next time.